it always makes my heart go pitter patter to hear students talk about classes years later as though they're still thinking about them. It makes it put into context why we do what we do. Um, and Emily, you in particular, you went on to write a capstone essay and capstone essay and at FSU is the culmination of the master's degree. Um, and you began that uh, project as an essay for the class as a term paper, but what did you write on and how, how did the, these ideas develop from the class? I was thinking about how pervasive the debt economy really is. And I wanted to think of ways to disrupt such a totalizing system. I was also interested in thinking through drug addiction as an alternative economy and as a rejection of the normalizing logic of debt. So my solution became, let's disrupt the temporal nature of debt through a rejection of a future-oriented life and instead create a proper present time by looking to drug addicts. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I'm not trying to say we should all do drugs to escape debt. Um, you know, there is a sort of black market debt economy that comes with dealing in illicit substances. But the point was to think through the kinds of alternatives that are there, you know, and what might that look like? I chose to look at Pakistani writer Mohsen Hamid's first novel, uh, Moth Smoke, in which a former banker loses his job, takes on debt from family and friends, and turns to drugs both as a dealer and a user. The novel gave me a chance to explore the relationship between colonialism and debt, while also questioning the kinds of disruptions that drug addictions cause to the debt economy. Mohsen Hamid is the person who also wrote The Reluctant Fundamentalist, which more people might be familiar with that. How have you revisited the ideas from the class and your scholarship after your master's? I've turned more toward thinking about the body and its materiality in relation to questions about the environment and race. Um, but within that, I still see the language of debt everywhere, even if it's not necessarily in economic terms. I mean, the neoliberal subject is an economic body that uh, is governed through biopolitics, through imperatives to maintain and improve the body in order to work. And that work is so often driven by debt. You know, as you mentioned earlier, we have more than one debt crisis going on. Uh, and we, we can go ahead and add medical debt to that long list. I've also been focusing on Asian American literature, which almost cannot be separated from talking about the neoliberal subject, from the myth of the model minority, um, resurgence of yellow peril rhetoric that has been um, more recently economically influenced, but um, obviously the pandemic has reminded us that uh, still very much so disease oriented as well. <laughs> and of course, um, also the history of colonialism in the, in the region and the relationship between that and the rise of immigration to the US. So now that you've gotten me to spill on all of my recent work, Dr. Goodman, before we sign off, can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now? Sure, I'm working on two projects. Um, one is called Gender Commodity, and it focuses on contemporary feminism, popular feminism, and how the logic of the commodity informs many of the contemporary issues from canceling to the third wave Me, Me Too, trans, and new reproductive economies. And the other is an edited collection called Feminism as World Literature, which um, is under contract with Bloomsbury. That all sounds so exciting. Um, thanks for sharing. Thanks to everyone who is watching. I look forward to seeing your future work. Thanks so much, Emily. You were so nice to do this. I'm totally indebted to you. <laughs>